Good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Depending on where you are listening to this, Merry Christmas from Heaven Embassy Church Online. We're very excited tonight to get into the lesson with our church leader, our, our church planner, who is the right Reverend Larry D. Shannon of, of Tupelo, Mississippi. I serve at his pleasure as the virtual deacon for this church. Good evening, good evening, Merry Christmas. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. And Amen. so be at rest and not stress. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Shannon and let him take it okay. as he will. Praise the Lord. Pastor All right. Shannon. All right. Thank you, Deacon and Thank you. All right. Okay. Let's see here. Okay. All right, all right, let's get started. Let's get started. Just a reminder here, especially with the way we're doing Sunday school, you never know who's going to see it. And you uh, pray that God's word, you know God's word will not return until he void. And so what we're doing is keeping in mind that uh, uh, um, there's a young leader out there at some point. Uh, somebody's going to share something with a young leader from this from this uh, Sunday school preview. So we remember that Sunday school and Sunday school is is a, a gateway to Christian leadership. We we'll always keep that in mind. Uh, you never know how we impact people for the future, and uh, not just get caught up in what we're doing right now. But uh, to understand that God's kingdom uh, will go on uh, after we're gone on, on to glory. Yes, yes, so I just want to keep that in front of us, to keep that in mind. Um, so uh, now what I want to do first thing, that's when I, that's when I throw little things up like this right here is, is to is to prime, is to start people to thinking yes, uh, yes. beyond uh, what they would normally think about. And if they see me grappling with with ideas and and you never know a uh, young person out there, somebody out there with a mind to grasp these different terms and then take those terms and, and become uh, uh, just like we saw with David, yeah. become a leader for God yeah. in this church. So we want to look at two theological terms, two theological terms. Uh, first term we'll look at is the word theology. Theology is the study of God. And practically speaking, it means thinking about God. Now, this is interesting. The atheist has to think about God to argue that God does not exist. Amen. Think about that. Amen. The atheist has to think about God to argue that God does not exist. So you cannot get around God. You can't get, you can't, you can't get around him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even people who say they don't believe in him have to think about him to talk about it. Yeah. Talk yeah. about what they don't believe about it. That's that's heavy, man. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What a God we serve. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the next term is a term called. And that brings us closer to what we'll be discussing today, Christology. Christology. It's the branch of Christian theology that clarifies Jesus' person, activity, and role in salvation. It's the branch of Christian theology that clarifies Jesus' person, mm -hmm. Is that means you, you start studying about his his uh his his deity, okay, and then where well, the lesson's gonna help us out, you start talking to, you have to study about his humanity. Ain't that so? Amen. And then yes, his activity. Yes, sir. Okay, what did he what his ministry? What did he do? His 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 uh 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 Work of salvation, the atonement. Okay. 
Uh, so that's the study. That's Christology and his role in salvation. All right. I just wanted to throw that up there since it's Christmas season. OK. And by the way. And then I threw this up there. I put Christian like this here for a reason. This is the next thing. And the word here, we always see this word. And I used to see this word. And I used to understand why they would put that word like that. Uh, it's a word. Uh, it's a common abbreviation of the word Christmas. Now, this word here, this beginning, which we look like, look like, looks like an X, comes from the Greek word pi. Okay? And there is a common misconception that the word it, it stems from a secularizing tendency. He de-emphasized the religious tradition of Christmas by taking the Christ out of Christmas. And a lot of people preach whole sermons on that without understanding the, what that, what that uh, letter represents. It represents the letter K. And then there's a whole study of, uh, uh, of what that means. So it literally means it represents, uh, uh, it stands in for Christ. It's Greek. So it's not, it's not somebody exiting out Christmas. Chris, Christmas. Amen. And so the reason I say that is because a lot of time when you are arguing, when you, when you are debating, when you are, uh, when you are uh, 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 being an apologist for uh, Christianity, you need to know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Because if you if the person can catch you in something like that, then they won't take anything else you have to talk about seriously. So it's understand. So I've I've seen a lot of leaders get up and. And so they try to take <laughs> So you need to know what you're talking about when you, you say that. Know. Yes, sir. Yes, so right. you leave that alone. That's what you better do. You don't know how to <laughs> leave that alone. But somebody will prove you different if they know what they're talking about. Okay. Now then, going into the uh, uh, the uh, title of the lesson for the day, 12, 24, 23, coming up. It's the expected mother's faith. Expected mother's faith. And it comes from Luke uh, chapter 1, verses 36 following. Luke chapter 1, 36 through 46 and verse 56. Uh, introduction, okay? Uh, Amen. Now, Amen. summarize, look at the gospel of Luke. Summarize, look at, at uh, the gospel according to Luke, the author. And Dick, I think Deacon Adam has pointed it out, but it's good to go over this because we're dealing with Luke. The author, Luke was a Gentile physician, hmm. historian, theologian, missionary companion of Paul and his primary care doctor. Right? Amen. The audience. It was addressed to uh, Theophilus, but attended for his church as well and ultimately for all believers. The date is between somewhere the early 60s and the uh, 80s AD. The theme, Luke presents Jesus as Messiah and Lord whose life, death, and resurrection make salvation available to all people everywhere, even to the least, the last, and the lost. Luke, because of his background, because he's not a Jew, his emphasis is on letting, letting everybody know Jesus came for all humanity. And he emphasizes that. Okay, main idea. And then we can let uh, Deacon and Andy go into it. Here's the main idea mm -hmm. of the passage that we're going to be discussing today. Uh, it says the life of Jesus that Luke records, uh, beginning in uh, Luke 4, 1, is possible because his conception was a result of God's direct mm -hmm. creative intervention look at that word creative hmm. creative intervention so that jesus share 
both the divine and the human spell. Mm. Come on now, that's the heavy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His conception, all right, made a response to the divine intervention shows that God's action requires human submission to the divine will. We have to yield our will. That's what Mary's doing in this lesson. Mm -hmm. She's yielding her will, God's will. But to let, notice he didn't force her. He, let me say it like this. Let me say it mm -hmm. like this. And you baby Christian might not be able to handle this. But he didn't force himself on Mary. Amen. Okay? Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, he came to her and he told her and she had to submit. She had to she had to obey. She had to become a willing servant to the divine will. That's a very important because a lot of people want God to do it all. And there are some cases in God's will that he will not do if we will not do. There are some parts of his will he's going to carry out his will regardless. And there are some parts of his will that he's going to carry it out only if we submit to his will. Mm -hmm. Now that means by using us, because he can use other people. And he could have used another, he could have used another maiden. Now I don't want to get into that argument that he didn't, he just didn't have to, because you can get theologically thick in here. So he just didn't have to use a virgin. Amen. A lot Amen. Of that, that'll blow a lot of people's minds. Oh, all that. Now, he just didn't have to. He yeah. didn't have to. Mary's sin wasn't passed to him. Her, right. her sin, her sin. Mary was just as sinful as anybody else. Mary was an incubator. He could have used, he could have used anyone for that. Yes, all right. But he chose to use because of, of his word and because of prophecy and because of uh, of people talking that he used a, a, a version. So it's a lot of reading. Look at this. The miraculous conception of the child Jesus invokes joy and a signal that God is fulfilling the covenant promises made to David and Abraham long ago. All right. All right. Now we're ready to get into the digging and to put up the slide and get into the body of the uh, lesson. Amen, brother. Coming his own way. Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's right. And, and, and Pastor, what you made uh, me recall in my spirit uh, was the genealogy lesson that we went okay. through last week. Okay. And, okay. And, and then, come on, Doc. Now. That's right. Doc. That's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, and, and we got to give some credit over to uh, to, to Reverend uh, Eccles that they couldn't be with us tonight. Where he said, you know, when you go to the doctor, the first thing they ask about is your yes, family sir. history. That was heavy. That was heavy. Yes, sir. So, so, bro, Pastor, you're right on point. That was heavy. He could have you. He did a whole lot of different folks to 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 for, for the fulfillment of the promise. He did. Yes, That's sir. good. That's yes, good. You, but you, but, but that, what, what I'm saying. Now listen to this, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is the reason we're doing this. Uh -huh. We're giving people ideas because when you go to Sunday school, uh, you, you don't want people bored. You want yes. them to think. Yes, sir. Amen. So, so, so saying something like that from folks there, wait a minute now. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, a lot of people wrestle with that. If you bring that up to some people, oh no, he couldn't have used anybody but, but Mary. He couldn't have used that. God can do anything. Even the even the lesson says that that there's nothing uh, too too you know hard for God. Yeah. So what what's gonna stop him with that? In other words, I know he doesn't have, he didn't have to use me. He doesn't have to use me. I know that. That's right. I'm yeah. grateful. Yes, I'm praising yes. him. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. Why would I be so? So arrogant to say God had to just use me. Mm. No, I had to. I surrendered, mm -hmm. and I'm thank God that He did you. But what I'm saying is, well, we want we we we're throwing these things out for people to use this in Sunday school to provoke people to think. Yes, sir. To Amen. prime them to think Amen. to see the Sunday school lesson is real. Yes, sir. Say it, Pastor. Talk and it's, it is something that you can learn from and grow from. 
Yes. We're not just here, uh, you know, just just uh, robots and and wrote and, and memorize. Well, this is real life stuff. Yes. This sir. is stuff that Christian need. And sometimes they overlook Sunday school. Sometimes people get too big for Sunday school, not realizing you can't grow without the word. Mm -hmm. That's right. That, that, you, that means you're not growing if you're not studying the God's word. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Dick. Go ahead. I just want to throw that out there because that would be a good thing to bring up Sunday school. And and and, and like you say, and, and you can prove that by going to the lineage. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, the genealogy. Yes, he sir. did use. He, did. he used prostitutes. Come on now. Come on, not talk to him. Incest, people, all of that stuff. So why is it so hard for him not to? He didn't. He didn't do it, but he could have. He could have. That's and man, right. that that. What I'm saying. The first time I heard that, and a lot of people in that audience, man, they got all their their, their fellows got all rough, man, because they were hearing something they weren't comfortable with. And you know. Uh, Another point, Pastor, that you made that I'm sure is going to invoke thought was about Xmas. The, 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 yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. Just tell us about Xmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you you taught me something, Pastor. I mean, I, I, yeah. I'm not ashamed to admit it. And yeah, yeah. Us need to be the same way, where we, you know, we have to meet God where we find Him. Amen. Right, right. Amen. right. But the thing of it is, is to find Him, and I think that's what right, we can right. encourage. So. Right. Uh, Okay, when we talk about the lesson, uh, I learned a couple of new things in addition. To, every time I come together with, with uh, Pastor Shannon, uh, just over the years that we've known each other, it's just always been full of the spirit and full of the, the, the wisdom, the, the wisdom that comes from the spirit. He has certainly <laughs> exhibited that in my life. And so I thank him for that. Um, but in teaching this lesson and looking at the lesson, study of the lesson, uh, the word do dola, dola came up, and I've heard of a dola before, and I know that uh, it's a woman assisting another woman doing birth, but but it also means uh, support, the support of of the of the birth giver. Yes, amen. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, so it's and so you'll see this relationship, this dola re relationship, as we talk about uh, Elizabeth and Mary. So uh, the caring nature of that, and, and, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But, but one thing about childbirth is with childbirth is noted that uh, even though uh, as men, uh, we can't have children, but uh, we know that when the children come about, there's just boundless joy in our children. So, Amen. Amen. And, men and the women experience it just as well, even though they go through a lot of pain, some uh to to to, to have a child, but mm -hmm. praise the Lord, praise the Lord is well worth it. You can see what the, this 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 wonderful child that we're getting ready to talk about. Uh my wife is singing a song about uh the fact that this baby, this baby Jesus, he was born, you know, to set us free. So this this baby Jesus, this baby died for us, Amen. So you just think about that, uh, what his mission was, what he was going to do for humanity. Now, uh, infectious joy, we can see infectious joy. What fast? Okay, we can see infectious joy uh, at the time when uh, you'll see this through the scripture as uh, Mary. Uh, first uh, sees Elizabeth. Okay, so now uh, pastors already talked about that. We not we don't need we don't need the background. So let's get right into the word. Uh, we are at Luke chapter one verse thirty six, and it reads, okay. "Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old old age, mm -hmm. and she who said she was unable to conceive." Is in her sixth month. Now, uh, in, in terms for what, what I started thinking about as I was reading this was uh, other women, uh, and, and and if you look at the uh, the word study in terms of the Hebrew context for uh, for for unable, uh, which is barren, uh, used in some other terms, and then when you look at barren, you see that that means sterile. In other words, the, you know, it's not going to be any childbirth. It's over in terms of the reproductive ability 
uh, of, of, of man and woman. I mean, it can happen to both of us as well. So that was the miracle. And then you also got to think about the miracle because we're talking about faith. Abraham, the faith of Abraham, you know, the faith of David, you see, and now we're hearing the faith of Mary, uh, the expectant mother of Jesus. And so uh, we, we, we know that Sarah, Sarah, Abraham's mm -hmm. wife was what? Barren. You know, mm -hmm. she, she didn't bleed. And, and of course, God delivered them the child, Isaac. Amen. Amen. And then mm -hmm. Isaac. What about Isaac, y'all? Isaac uh, 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 was in love uh, with, 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 with one of the daughters and was tricked by Rachel's father. We know the story. I'm not going to get into it. But she was barren. Rachel was barren for a period of time. And we also know in tonight's lesson, we were going to look at Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, and see what happens to him. So uh, the, the one that's speaking in this first verse 36 is the angel Gabriel. And, and the one being spoken to is Mary. And we can jump over to Luke 1, 26 and 27, go back up a little bit. And it says, in the sixth month of Mary's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now, we talked about all of that in the genealogy uh, as we looked at Matthew uh, chapter one last mm -hmm. uh, study period. So uh, this is this is praise time. This is praise time because the conception was miraculous, uh, given that Elizabeth had gone through menopause, and we can see that in verse one and eight, seven and eighteen. That's my birthday too, by the way, seven eighteen. Yeah, and Man. she and her husband they had been childless. Because Elizabeth, because of her sterility, she was unable to conceive. Now, the, the, the information right here is, is important because the information about Elizabeth's pregnancy would have strengthened Mary's faith. It confirmed what the angel Gabriel had just told Mary that the, the child Mary would be barren, was the Christ, you see? So in other words, let's go to 37, you'll see this dola, this dola relationship being strengthened uh, by Elizabeth. You, okay, 37. For no word from God will ever fail. Amen, I think Pastor said that. He said that earlier today. Also, Brother Pastor, I heard in a, in a, in a sermon uh, from uh, Pastor Morrison, uh, 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 on, on this past Sunday, where he put it in the terms that uh, when with, at the, the same angel talked to Gabriel, talked to Mary, but Gabriel also talked to Joseph, <laughs> and so and so uh, 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 the, just in terms of a sanctified imagination, in terms of what uh, Joseph may have felt given his circumstances, but but God said to Joseph that this is the fulfillment of my promise. And even though we're talking about 1,500 and so, some odd days, year, years, before the promise was fulfilled, you see? So it happened because of God's will, the promise was being fulfilled of the born of the coming savior through Mary. It just happened to come through Mary by God's will, but, uh, that's a blessing. So, 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 so the fulfillment, see, we're looking at the fulfillment of the promise to Abraham. We're looking at the fulfillment tonight of the promise to David. You see? Amen. So, so these things are very strong in terms of our beliefs. Amen. Okay, after 38, uh, I'm going to ask Pastor to come back and give us some help on this. I'm just going to read it and turn it over to him. Uh, 38. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Amen. Amen. I'm going to stop my share. Go back to our pastor, and, and he's going to share his screen for us. Amen. Oh, did that have it still up that deep? No, sir. I had, you know, I took it down when I went to it, see, in terms of the Zoom. Okay, but I'm talking about the 38. I, I, was, I was going to X that out. 
Oh, okay. No, no, you didn't have, you didn't have it. I thought you had, that's why I misunderstood. Okay, let me keep going there. I got Right, you. right. Keep going. You, you must have read. I didn't read that, did I? I did. No, no, you didn't read it. No, no, I did. <laughs> okay, you read, man, you paid attention. No, I, I just stopped. I just, I'm I just, to uh, what you got. I'm trying to keep up. Oh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I was just gonna go through it with with you on it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead with. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so now here, here we are, where uh, the angel uh, Gabriel has told Mary about her condition, and Mary answered in terms of her faith, and she said, "I am the Lord's servant." So now we have both the elderly oh. priest Zachariah. And uh, Zachariah is, is, is Elizabeth's husband, and the young virgin Mary, they were asked the same question, how? But Gabriel's responses to each of them differ. When Zachariah asked for, skeptically for a sign, Zachariah, the priest, asked skepti skeptically for a sign to com help convince his faith. An inappropriate response from a person of his a religious status. That's one thing we have to be careful about is, 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 is look for the spirit, look for the Holy Spirit uh, in people and, and, and watch and, and, and see how well they know the Bible and see how well they are responsive. But Mary, look at Mary's reaction when we couple it with that of Zach Zachariah. Uh, Mary's reaction, on the other hand, was one of innocent inquiry. I like that. Given her subsequent humility, as seen in the verse that we just studied, she was willing to do whatever service that God required of her. That's mm -hmm. that's the that's the lesson. That's the yes, lesson. Man. Young Mary's faith surprised that of an old priest, Zachariah. Mary's faith can be compared and contrasted with Hannah's. Which is in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 1. I, that's, that's the other person I was trying to think about. 1 Samuel 1, 10 through 20. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 and you know that Hannah was the mother. We talked about Hannah. We, we know that she was the, 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 the mother of Samuel, but Hannah was barren, and Hannah went through some things with the priest to get the blessing so that Samuel, come on now, y'all got to know the word. Uh, uh, and, and so then when Samuel came about late in life, his mother, Took him to the priest. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, sir. Bam. Ooh. So, so, so a lot of times we have to remember, just as uh, Abraham showed his faith when he, when God told him to take Isaac and sacrifice him to to to, to God. You see, and now we look at Hannah, even though she's not a part of this lesson, she's in the lineage. So we see that even though. The baby came late in life. It was still a joy, but the baby, listen to me, the baby does not come first. The wife doesn't come first. God comes first in all we do. And we have to be representative of that when we're not exactly sure about what he's trying to get, get us to do, but we must rely on God's will. Amen. Amen. Okay, so now she's gotten the message, and uh, Mary has received the word that uh, her her cousin, her aunt Elizabeth, uh, her, her aunt Elizabeth was a child. So, uh, scripture thirty nine. At that time, Brother Pastor, you want to say anything? I'm sorry. No, no, that just it's emphasizing. Uh, it, it's good to emphasize here. You see where. Uh, God's uh, uh, is is working. He's getting ready to work a, a, a miraculous, but Mary's will is involved. Her submission is involved. And he, that's, that shows us how we have to operate with God. Yes, sir. Uh, a lot of times we, we miss out on God's uh, amazing work because we won't we won't submit to him. That's right. You know, we won't we won't let him use us. And so Mary, like you said, she she uh 
participated in this endeavor and he was blessed by it. And where those where the priest uh he he didn't he he missed out on that. That's right. Uh, so that's what happened when we don't uh, yield to God's will. So it's very important to talk about God's will. Yes, sir. It's very important because we living in a world who wanna do their thing. Yes, sir. Come on now. Yes, sir. We living in a world who want to do that. Not only will they not serve God, but they just want to, uh, some people want to twist God's word. Hmm. Twist. Uh, I think that was a passage by God's word, 130, what was that, 37, nothing's impossible. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I am your servant. Word, that is 38. May your word, see? Yes. See, there are people, there was a guy today, he's trying to twist he it's a it's a sexual sin that he wants he wants the church to agree on. Mm. He wants the church to agree on. He wants to he says the church needs to change its position uh, to evolve. Well, if the church changes its position on certain things the words say, then it's going to be out of God's will to match up with what social uh, society says. Exactly. Yes, sir. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. No, no. Amen. That's that's so. That's so it's saying. like it's like if I, I, I there are a lot of things that that uh, uh, I have to give up because it's not in God's will. Yes, sir. It's my will. It's in my hand. <laughs> yeah. Come on, it's in mine. Amen. Come on, it's in mine, but it's not in God's will. Mm -hmm. you, you see what I'm saying? His word tells us. There are a lot of things, and I don't understand why these people are trying to push the church to go against the word. We the church both love homosexual homongers. The word tells us to love everybody. Yes, but it doesn't tell us to go along with sin. Mm -hmm. We're not being holier than that. We're not being homophobic. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not being uh, not accepted. We 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 well, our our authority comes from the word. We we are to yield to God's word. That's what man is doing. And he's going to get us to see, we want to be light, man. <laughs> we want to be approved by the world. So, so you know what I'm saying? Mm. So so we want to we want to say we in love everybody. Well, yeah, we love people. You love your child. You love your children. But when, you, when you're rearing them, you don't let them have everything they want. You don't let them have everything they will. That's a part of your love. Yes, it's to keeping them doing things. My child, I had a child. His will was to play with the iron. Mm. That was his will. That's what he wanted to do. Mm. He was infatuated with the iron. Mm. And we would tell him what would happen to him if he played with the hot iron. Mm. And one day, one day, he learned it the hard way. Mm. Amen. He had, a, he had a, a scar on his face that lasted him for years. Okay, and it wasn't because we didn't love him that we told him this is wrong for you to do. We we did that to protect him, mm. and so we so some of these uh, the word is in there to protect us a lot, man. So we don't even want to do that. Let alone with what Mary had to do, we don't even want to do uh, what we don't want to do. You know what what what's comfortable to us. And here Mary is, is she's getting ready to go through a whole, man, her life is going to be changed, the way she's going to be looked at, the way people are going to be talking about her. Here is a young woman out of wedlock with a baby. Let's be real. We're looking at this fancy stuff. This woman got to go through something. And we need to tell people, if you're going to follow the Lord, you're going to go through some things. You ain't gonna please everybody when you when you follow in Christ. No, sir. And so that's 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 something that people need to understand, man. And he just and I just and he was talking about the preacher and how he wants the preacher to change his position, to evolve. Also, and then he used the word slave. But the church evolved on slavery. So they involved on slavery. They all they all evolved on homosexuality. They all involved. Man, there are a lot of things in the Bible that's difficult to interpret. You, mm -hmm. let, me, let me be real. There are scriptures in the Bible that's difficult for us to understand. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things the Bible says 
that, that they shouldn't commit adultery. Come on now. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't murder. Homosexual. It's in the smoke. It ain't hard to understand. It's not. Go ahead, Doc. Think about what, what, I, what I want to do. Hmm. A lot of things in that commandment, man. That folk get you so upset, man. If you just go on your what you want to do, you end up in jail. Sometimes it keeps you out of jail. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What kind of society would we have? If we did everything we wanted to do, but as believers, you know, so I, I just think that's important, man, the will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our will, we want to understand that we have to submit ourselves to God, yield our will to God's will. And uh, uh, all this other stuff, you know, like it's McDonald's, we, you know, have it, we want it, we want the church to have, we want the church, we want to have it our way. We want to change the church. You know, same sex marriage. Why? What the church get with it? Get hip, girl. Are you same sex? You know, uh, uh, you know the preacher. You know, there's some of some preachers man get to the point. The doctor doesn't mean them. Come on now. Oh, that preacher, that preacher use scriptures. Lord have mercy. Mm. Use scriptures to try to convince people to do wrong. Mm. Because they, you know, who they are. And, and so what I'm saying is, man, it a lot of things ain't complicated. So we need to stick with, with yielding to God's word. Come on, they get back to it, man. Amen. No, when you get in God, when you get in God's will and our will, that's that's a yes, that's something. Yes. I'm yes. glad Mary, I'm glad Mary didn't yield to glad she didn't uh, uh let what the world thought about her. That's what that 38 verse is talking about. Go go ahead, Dave. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, bro, Pastor, what helped me to understand it was Matthew 16, 24, that I always live my life by. In order to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, you must first, key word, deny yourself. Take mm -hmm. up your cross, my problems, whatever I got going on in my life, and follow Jesus, and, and, and bear my burden and follow Jesus Christ. Matthew mm -hmm. 16, 24, in order to become his disciple. Okay. Man. Amen. Praise the Lord. At the uh, verse 39. So joy is me. They finna me. This is this this gonna make me shout too. 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea. Now, one thing I'd like to show about this, Mary lived in Nazareth, a town in Galilee, and we can find that in Luke 1 26, while Elizabeth and her husband Zachariah lived in an unknown town in Judea. And that's important when we look at Judea because Judea was a hilly uh, region or uh, district that included Jerusalem. Now, if Hebron was not the unnamed city, then the trip would still be at least 35 miles that Mary had to travel to get to Elizabeth. And what footnote, because of the reality of life, either way, it's a long trip by foot. <laughs> so Mary most likely made the trip with a caravan or a companion for safety. Women could not travel out on the roads alone. A amen. Fact. So Thank now you. difficult travels, look, look at this other factor that comes into the lesson. Because the reason that she, she after she heard, Mary heard from the angel Gabriel, she, 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 she knew that she didn't have much time where she could make these long types of journey uh, mm -hmm. while in the states of pregnancy. So the haste was, uh, was done to fulfill her eager desire of, concerning what the angel had told her. So at 40, Scripture 40, it says, when she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth, uh, I'm going to 41, because this is a fa famous scripture that a lot of people know and and and, and talk about, and that is uh, that that's where uh, forty one. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was so filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, who mm -hmm. I can just see that in my spirit. You know, because you have two, you have one 
the Messiah, and then the other, who Elizabeth's child was John the Baptist. I think most of us know that. And John Amen. the Baptist, let, let me get back in, into the time. The time factors. The time factors indicated that Mary was not uh, women. No, no, no. It said in, even the time factors indicate that she was not in far enough along to be shown. Even so, Elizabeth realized that her younger relative was with child. And when the two met, a provoking, a provoking, a startling reaction from the baby in the room. So it says nothing inherently unusual about a baby moving in the womb. We understand that. But the timing of the reaction here is significant in the relationship that later emerges between Jesus, Mary's child, and John the Baptist, Elizabeth's child. And so the latter, John the Baptist, was so filled with the Holy Spirit even before he was born as an empowerment to make people ready to be prepared for the Lord. And we can see all of that. Let, let me just read this real quick because Luke 1, 15 through 17 says this, if I may, uh, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah, yes, sir, the prophet, to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the key figure throughout the scriptures written by Luke. His gospel and the book of Acts uh, combine further combined feature about 60% of the New Testament's uses of the designation Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So, yes, sir, Pastor, go. Oh, yeah. Let me let me say something. Uh, the, the important thing for us to point out here is that it's important to understand we don't have to manufacture excitement in the church. Uh, we don't have to use uh, entertainment. We don't have to use uh, uh, trickery. We don't have to use uh, worldly means to to uh, uh, motivate people. Uh, all we gotta do is present Jesus, because if Jesus is if if a person cannot get excited about who Jesus is. They can't get excited about anything in the church. You know, think about that now. It says that 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 the baby at this announcement we uh, 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 literally shouted in the womb. In the womb. Come on now. Yes, sir. That's what happened. The idea of Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I mean, come on now. You ain't got to be in no church. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Something about the name of Jesus. Somebody. Man. If you know him, though. If you know him. If you know him. If you know him. Yeah, if you know him. See, grandmama had church before church. Yes, sir. <laughs> I mean, because I wasn't going to church back then. I'm, I'm getting in the house. I'm getting there. I'm reading now. I got big enough to say I don't want to go to no church. And, and my bedroom was right next door to the kitchen. Yes, sir. And grandmama would go in the she would before she would go to church, she would go in the in the kitchen. And she had a voice. She was a uh, she was a uh, they call her uh an angel of the church because of her voice. She could sing so well. Mm -hmm. I mean she sang like she sounded like a professional. Yeah. A voice would, a voice would. She had one of those Mahalia Jackson voices. Not, not a. It wasn't a a big voice. It wasn't a big voice like Mahalia in that sense. Uh, it was a, uh, but it was a stirring voice. Mm, yes. Yeah. I mean, she just was gifted with her voice. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that as a kid. 
And so she was, uh, she was an, they would call her an angel of the church because of the way she could sing. And she was saying a lot of those hymns, the things that I didn't want to hear because I'm trying to get my sleep out. I worked in the night. I got to go to work the next day, you know. Yeah. She didn't care anything about what, what I'm thinking about in there. She, she in the kitchen making up biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> Having church before, church before she go to church. She's singing those hymns, D. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to put the cover over my head and come and try and get a little extra. Come on now. Then, come on now. I remember this day, one day at church. I was sitting there in the pulpit. Touch the church that I grew up in, the church that she used to sing in. I'm sitting there. She's still there. She was still alive then. I'm mm. sitting in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. And one of the songs she used to sing all, all the time was Jesus, uh, uh, keep me near the cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so the church lit out on that in their devotion. Come on now. I'm a new pastor. I'm the new pastor. Yeah, yeah. And they lit out on that song. The song I all those songs and hymns I had been, you know, covering up my head over for years and didn't want to hear, you know, I'm trying to run from the law. <laughs> Man, they hit that song one time before. Told me up, Pete. Just what you were saying. Told me up. The heart is real. Told me up. Thank God I couldn't get away from it. I know that's right. I'm glad. He, I'm glad he found me too, and I Thank found you. him. I'm Thank glad. you. Yes, sir. So what I'm saying is, how is how is it? Uh, you look, man. Don't no waste no time trying to do extra. Put all your attention in in presenting Jesus to people. Yes, sir. Amen. Because He's enough. He's enough. He's I tell enough. people. I used to tell them all the time. If you you can't shout about Jesus, you don't need to be shouting. Yeah, okay, go ahead, people. Just tell them that. If talk. you can't shout about Jesus, you don't need to be shouting. Talk to him. Talk to him. John shout. Come on now. John shout. In the womb. Uh, oh, I'm having a good time. In the womb, man. In the womb, the baby, the baby shouting just because he he he, he knew who he was in the presence of. Yes, sir. So he could be in his presence. Mm. That's, what, that's what worship is about. That's what we come to church for. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right, 42. 42. In a loud voice. Uh, let, let me, this is Luke uh, 1, 42. It says, in a loud voice she is claimed, blessed are you young women, and blessed is the child you would bear. It says that before for Elizabeth to make this type of statement, Mary is in early stages of, of, her, of her pregnancy. Uh, it must have been the Holy Spirit that re that uh, that that revealed the state of Mary to Elizabeth. The Holy Spirit, Amen. So so Elizabeth, this is what Pastor was just saying. Elizabeth could not be silent concerning the events that were transpiring. She may have been in seclusion concerning her pregnancy, but when the mother of the Lord shows up on her doorstep, Elizabeth became a loud proclaimer of the truth. Amen. Okay. Amen. Loud. Loud. A loud proclaimer of the truth. And so, uh, let me see. It's uh, uh, 40, 40, 43. Let me, say let me say something. Let me say something about this. About, about this. Okay. About this. Uh, uh, you know, everybody, everybody uh, worship differently. Everybody praise God. We don't have to all praise God the same. You know, you don't have to run and jump out the window to praise God. Um, but what I do have a problem with is when people come to church and tell you that we are a quiet church. That's what they said. We are a quiet church. Because I remember back in the day, one church, uh, that was this church, this lady went in and started shouting, and the usher pulled to a side and told her, we don't do that here. Wow. You hear what I'm saying? We don't do that here. Did you hear what I said? 
And I'm like, to, I'm like, to my, I'm saying to myself, I know everybody worship differently. Some people, uh, you know, we worship in our own way. And everybody don't have to run up down the aisle and jump out the window. I can say that too. But I do have a problem with that same person. That same person who's quiet on Sunday morning at the worship service, but yet at the ball game. Come on yeah, now, go back. Come on. Now that's going to have a problem. And you quiet on Sunday morning. You don't do that on Sunday morning. Right. You ain't moved about worship. But at the ball game, you're going to let everybody know the team you rooting for. That's right. That's right. You're the loudest thing in the building. But come Sunday morning, you you quiet. Don't nothing move you. Yeah, we don't I do got that. a problem with that. We, don't we got a that. problem with that. I do too, pal. Yep. Now, if you got if you quiet, if that's your demeanor, and you you know you worship God in your own way, but you do it, but at the ball game, you ought to be the same way. That's right. Because if you can get excited about your team, you ought to get excited about the Lord. Yes, sir. You know, I just want to point that out. Yes, sir. Because yes, yes, you, you can't help it, man. Look here. Let you me tell you say this it. right here. That was a lady who that was one of the members I was pastor. And this church had a, uh, there was a big white church. They had a, they had a, a, a play. It was, no, it was a scenery, scenery, some kind of scenery. It, they were doing, showing different parts of heaven and hell and what hell would be like. And, and, and then at the end, thank God, you know, you don't go to hell and blah, blah, whatever. But at some point while they were discussing this, uh, the member of the church I was the pastor of, they came back and told me about it. They mm -hmm. said, Pastor, your member told the white folk church up, shout. <laughs> Listen to what I'm saying. Because she started thinking about it. Mm -hmm. She was saved from hell, man. Yeah. The way they were depicting it. She was so glad that she wasn't going to hell she got happy and told the prop she was shouting. She was shouting the prop. And they came back and told me, your member, say your member throw up the white folk church. You're not folk. Though. But what I'm saying is, just like the prodigal son, dad. Yes, sir. Remember when he when the boy, when the elder brother came to the dad getting on him by celebrating, he told his son, he said, son, I can't help it. Hmm. He said, we had to celebrate because that, that whole passage is about the lost and found joy. Yes, sir, joy. When she finds the, when, when the shepherd finds the sheep, yes. he invites them. There's more joy. It's about yes, joy sir. in finding the lost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He yes, said, there's joy in heaven, man. You're on fire. You're on fire. Good. I'm just saying there's joy in in yeah. this. That's joy good. to the world. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Yeah. You can't yeah. come on. Go ahead, Woo. Woo. This, this shouting stuff right here. Oh, yeah. I, I, come on. Let's go. I'm, that, that, boy, this is beautiful. Yeah. Lord, thank you. See, I've never, I've never, spent, I've never spent the time like this before. Oh, and this is just so re refreshing and rejoicing. To me, I'm so glad the pastor invited me to be a part of Heaven Heaven Embassy Church Online. Ooh, I just ask that you, the listeners, would yes. uh, share. Pray for us. Yes, Amen. Pray, pray for us. Pray, pray, for us. Said, pray for us. Yeah. Pray for us and share. Yeah. Yes, yes. Come a partner with us. Listen, let me say this right here. Partner with us. See, when you share, when you when you share, and when you like this this uh. uh but the videos of whatever uh in whatever capacity platform you find them on, you're partnering with us, man. Amen. You're partnering with us in the gospel. Yeah. You're helping us get the word out. We can't do it by ourselves. No. And so by you sharing this is a is a is a blessing. And 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 it's uh uh it's 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 God's word going forward. And we all are part of that. So yeah, partner with us, man. Like and share. But it's not enough just to look at it. You need that's what that's what counts. The liking and the sharing, it it really means a lot to to the ministry. And prayer, mm -hmm. number one, is prayer. Go ahead, D. Go ahead, D. Number one is prayer. Amen. Uh, uh, one, uh, Luke one forty two. 
In a loud voice, she claimed, well, I, I just read that. I'll read it again. I'll go right to 43. Blessed are you, young women, and blessed is the child you will Wait, wait a minute, Dave. What, listen to what he said. Blessed among women. Yes. Listen yes. to that. Blessed are you among women. Yes. Notice now something. I just thought about this. There was no jealousy. Yes, amen. Think about That's that now. Thing. Yes, sir. Think about that. See, she's so caught up in the Lord, she ain't even got, she, that's the first thing from her mind. But you know how it is in, in the modern day. Yes, sir. There's yeah, a competition. Yeah. Come on yeah. now. Yeah, everybody jealous. Everybody, everybody jealous of, of <laughs> she, she is, she is glad. She is happy. <laughs> she is rejoicing for Mary. Yeah. And yeah. Mary needs this. She needs a doula. Okay. She it. needs <laughs> this. Yes, sir. She needs it because oh. she's a very young woman, right? You know, she's very young woman. Yes, she needs it. She don't need Elizabeth to come in down on, and that's what's wrong. Come on now, let me bring it home. Right. What's wrong with our young? What we got a lot of older women compete with the young women. Ooh. We might as well go and bring it home. <laughs> we might as well go and bring it home. Then you open up the can now. We got a lot of older women. Instead of directing and teaching, they are they are trying. Let me tell you something. They're trying to outgrass the young women. Ooh. They're jealous of the young women. You can't compete with young women. <laughs> you shouldn't be compete. You can't compete, and you shouldn't be competing. Amen. Amen. Come on Amen. now. Yes, we need to hit the age. Back your age, there come a time in our life that we need to uh, uh, accept who we are. We are the the uh, uh, we are the mentors now. Yes. that's when that's when young people look up to you. Yes. They don't look up to you. You know, you out there uh, acting acting out there acting uh, trying to on the dance floor. They can't even get on the dance floor for mom and them. Come on, that dumb. They didn't even bring the boyfriend home but mama trying to hit him. Let me go. Let me. There ain't no competition. There ain't no competition. Oh, she needs ministering to. She needs an encouragement from an older woman. Yeah. And she's getting it. Mm. Elizabeth is so happy for her. Yeah. Yeah. She ain't trying to call back today. Come on now. I'm dressing like... You know, Dressing like you're 18. Mm -hmm. Dressing like you're 18 when you're 89. Come on now, talk to me. <laughs> Come on now. Let me go. Let me go. Come on. You better go. I think I got that. You That's got something that they had seen there. That was encouragement. There ain't no competition. No, and we got a lot of that in our churches with young women. The yeah. older women are competing with the younger women. The way they dress. Mm. Come on now. Amen. What, 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 bro, bro, they they have, they, 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 come on now. <laughs> I mean, at some point, man, come on. Yeah. yeah. At some point, man, let it go. Let it go. That's wisdom. Great hair ain't nothing but wisdom. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong it's with natural. That. Yes, oh, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Come on now. Yes, sir. Botox. Right. Botox. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Rolling grace. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Rolling. Come on now. We all come on. Let the yes. young people have their time. Let them have Instruct it. them. Yes. Let them be young. Not jump in there trying to compete with them. That's right. Amen. Wearing yes. the same outfit. Woo. Come on now. Is this right in that lesson? This right in the lesson. Yes, sir. This is what she's doing. She's doing what Mary needed. Here was a young teenage. That's mm -hmm. what Mary is. That's her age. Mm -hmm. She need, and here's an older woman providing her with what she needs because what she's gonna have to go through. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth right there with her, celebrating with her. Help me. She ain't mm -hmm. competing with her, she's celebrating with her. Yes, sir. Oh yes. man, I'm I'm dumped up. 43. <laughs> Luke 1, 43. Praise the Lord. Thank you. This is ooh, this is a Holy Spirit filled lesson presentation tonight. 43. But why am I so favored mm. that the mother of my Lord should come to me and pass mm. 
pastor said it just so he, he she is she is she is joyful she's joyful for the the, the condition of marriage and pastor said it's, it's, it's beautiful beautiful summation of that pastor let's keep Thank going you. see what else he's gonna do so then at 44 at, at 44 luke 1 44 as soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears the baby in my womb leaped for joy. For joy. See there? Thank you. There it is. There it is. <laughs> we've, already, we've already discussed that. Yes, sir. That's right. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> we've beautiful. already discussed that. Beautiful. 45. It says, Blessed is she who believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. And it says this. While the blessing of Luke 142, like Pastor said, we just we had discussed that was based on that fact that Mary was to bear the Messiah. The blessing pronounced here is based on her faith. She who has believed. Mary's be belief starkly contrasts the unbelief of the elderly priest, Elizabeth's husband, Zachariah, father of John the Baptist. And you can see that over in Luke 1, uh, 5 through 20. Mary, this is the key. This is the key. This is the key. This is why uh, Joshua and Caleb, I keep that they were the only two that were in Egypt to make it into the promised land because they had faith. They did, they did not exhibit any doubt. You have Amen. to have faith and rely on your understanding, your, your, the Holy Spirit. Do not Amen. give it to your own understanding. Make it into the promised land. Amen. So, Amen. so Mary was blessed because she believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise as he did to Abraham. Huh? As he did Amen. to Abraham. Come on, son. Yes. 56. Skipping down to 56. Luke 1, 56. Now, this is a blessing. And this is where uh, Elizabeth was able, everything Pastor said. I, I, Pastor, you, you just on fire. You're on fire. I just got to tell you. So it says this. I'm going to read the explanation. It says, Mary, 56, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months, for three months, and then returned home. And it mm -hmm. says the three months spent with Elizabeth were undoubtedly an additional blessing for Mary. Amen. She got mentorship. As Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Well, well stated. And we have to be mentors <laughs> to our young people yes, in yes, terms sir. of showing them who Jesus Christ of Nazareth yes, is. Amen. Yes, sir. That's what you want to do. Show these young people Jesus in us. Yes, See? sir. And the way that we show Jesus in us is to love them. Come on, Lord Jesus. It says, Amen. Mm, mm, yes. this was a place, this was a safe place for Mary to adapt her to her new situation. And Elizabeth provided support. Mm -hmm. Mary was also undoubtedly a blessing to Elizabeth in return. As the mm -hmm. older woman, remember, she was sterile. She was she was barren. Elizabeth, in the latter stage of, of her pregnancy, because she needed the help of a younger person. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And here I said, you know, they were there for one another. Amen. Could be for each other. Amen. The love of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Love, love, love one another. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. In the competition. Amen. 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 I know this. Is, was that the last verse? Okay. Yeah, we are. Yeah. So turn it back over to our pastor. Uh, we all right. All right. On time, bro, pastor. We, we, we right on all time. All right. I'll let you wrap it up as you normally do. Let me stop, share, give it over to my pastor. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Well, we'll we'll let it let it in there, and uh, uh, been a beautiful lesson, and uh, just ask that the listeners continue to uh, pray with this ministry and uh, uh, like it and uh, and share, partner with us by doing that. And uh, we'll be so grateful and we'll give God all the glory. 
So oh, yeah, good. Nick, good lesson. Good lesson, Dick. Good, good, yes, good, good, yes, good one, man. You so bought it out. you bought it out, Pastor. That's what yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It just I just saw some things in there, man. It hit me when I saw when I saw Elizabeth and Mayor how they were interacting, and there were no hmm. man. That's that's what we need today. That's what we need today. That's right. That's right. Man, our young people need. She needed that. Yes, Mary needed that. Like you said, in return, Elizabeth needed that. That's right. So in return, they were ministering to one another. Yes. Instead of competing with one another, they 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 served one another. And that that's we can take that away from here. That was beautiful, beautiful lesson. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, once again, we come to you with thanksgiving in our heart. We we uh ask that you would continue to uh bless uh Deacon Andy and bless uh, this ministry that you've given us and ask that you would just uh, just take it and use it for your glory, for the up building of your kingdom down here on earth and ask that you would just draw, Master, draw disciples to yourself, Master, you know, to help us with this work. And we so carefully give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, then we'll see you next time. Uh, you. All right. God bless. God bless. Merry Christmas.